Hey everyone, hope you're all doing very well. Welcome back to another one here on this channel. In today's video, I got a very interesting video here for you today because for the first time ever on this channel, we ended up getting connected up with a battery brand seller. And I'm gonna go through a bunch of questions that you guys have left me here on a post that we ended up making on the channel and asking those difficult questions to this specific seller. Now this is not just any seller here for radio controlled lithium polymer battery packs. This is one of the best brands that money can buy here in our hobby, representing some of the best battery packs that we can get our hands on for performance. And they are very well known for performance. And I do have to give a big thank you to SMC for spending some time with me and going through each one of these questions and giving me an understanding of what happens behind the scenes in order to get these battery packs to market. We're gonna go through the questions. I'm gonna talk about the answer that I pulled out from my interview with SMC and we're also going to talk a little bit about SMC along the way. So let's get started and jump right into those questions. These questions don't necessarily have any particular order with them. We're just going through them as they have been assembled here up on the screen. So I'm going to show the questions and answers as we go through it here right now. Let's jump into the first one here. What's the difference in the manufacturing process of a real lithium polymer battery pack and those that act more like a lithium ion? I'd imagine that the subscriber here is getting at the voltage that you see when the battery is at a specific capacity. A real lithium polymer battery pack, we've shown the capacity charts here up on the channel. Channel. I'll throw it up here as well and some other battery manufacturers that we've tested and I've shown those as we've tested them as well actually have lower amounts of voltage that you see coming out from those particular batteries. So the answer here is that real lithium polymer battery packs are using 100% lithium cobalt oxide. That is the high quality battery pack and this is what SMC often places onto their website that they use the real cathode material LCO which provides higher voltage stability under load and better performance for radio controlled applications especially those that are under high amounts of demand. Now cheaper battery packs as the ones that you may have encountered use possibly a, a bunch of these different combinations. Nickel, manganese, cobalt, this is known more or as like your SMC or even lithium manganese oxide. This is known as for short LMO blends. And all these blends do is lower the cost for those batteries to be produced. However, it comes at a penalty and that penalty is the performance that you get. Lower quality materials cause voltage sag and reduced effective capacity because you drain the battery pack, you hit the voltage cutoff and it leaves a whole bunch of non-usable capacity remaining in the battery. And that's essentially what makes them look and appear more like lithium ion cells to us when we use them. Let's move on to the second question here. What's the highest C rating a LiPo cell can deliver? And the answer that I got was a realistic top end true C rating is extremely difficult to define and understand exactly what it means. And the real reason as to why this is true is because all the different battery cell providers out there have different means of testing their battery packs. Someone might test a C rating based purely off a of temperature. That's what we do here on the channel. We run at a constant current, roughly a constant load more so, and then we end up getting a specific temperature out of that pack. And if the if the cell doesn't maintain a temperature or lower than that temperature, then it has essentially failed the test. However, you can have other manufacturers that are placing specific loads on the cell and only look at voltage recovery for a specific time period. If within the first 30 seconds you get good voltage, it's going to be considered as good for that specific C rating. Not the true defined and definition based C rating that we've covered on the channel here before. So there is no official standard for C rating test. What we found here on the channel, and I spoke with SMC about this in the interview, is that the SMC battery pack has been the best battery that we've tested thus far, and it's produced the highest C rating that we've calculated use our in, using our internal resistance factor, and that was somewhere around the 35C to 40C mark, somewhere around there, and that's what I truly believe is the highest C rating that a LiPo can deliver as of now. So looking at the third question that we have here, are LiPo manufacturers 
was transparent on specifications versus the different brands that are out there because a brand may not necessarily be producing their own cell, they are buying it from a factory. And the real and true answer that I got here is no, they are not. And one of the examples that we can even show here is that we pulled off one of the cells label and discovered that there was a different capacity on the actual manufactured cell versus the cell label, which comes from the brand. So transparency, even on capacity is a little bit difficult and especially on other items that we'll get into here very shortly. Let's jump into the fourth question here. What's the deal with C ratings? We need good C ratings to understand what we are buying. And the answer that I ended up getting here is that it's quite difficult to manage the whole C rating. The industry has essentially gone a little crazy in this area. And obviously, because we do a whole bunch of tests, we see this as well. And if SMC were to only market the batteries based off of true C ratings defined under one umbrella of C rating tests. Remember, there is no standardization for these C ratings. So that in itself is already a problem for this labeled value that we can't really blame anyone about. However, when we get into the actual values and how they're bloated beyond belief, it's because they need to compete against the other labels that are found on their competitors' battery packs. Everyone is essentially doing the same thing. How the heck do you get out of that condition, out of that environment? in order to produce real information that can be provided to the consumers of these batteries. What I really understood from SMC is that they are trying to be as transparent as they possibly can while also you know, trying to be a business that's competing against everyone else. What they have done in the past is taken a look at yet another metric. I don't know if everyone caught on to this metric or if it really took off or not. It doesn't seem like, seem like it has been. And this metric was known as the power factor on on their website. They would take a battery, they would load it up at a specific rate, and then they would measure after a certain amount of time the voltage that that battery maintained, and that's the value that would be posted on the website. Now that value directly translates into the performance that we can get. If a, you see a bigger number, that battery can perform better at that specific load within that specific time. So this was true information that was very usable. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like this has caught on, and that's why you may not see it in the the near future. Now jumping into that fifth question, which is somewhat related to the C rating. Why don't they advertise battery packs based on internal resistance instead of this C rating that is highly manipulated? And the answer here is quite interesting because it's totally possible to throw an internal resistance measurement on a battery pack and let it go out there for those people to go and test and verify it. But that's where the challenge SMC says it starts. When people ended up taking these battery packs home and if they know a target value value for internal resistance, we know there's a whole bunch of factors that affect this internal resistance measurement. So let's say that I'm new to the hobby and I know nothing about that. I go ahead and I take that battery pack home, I throw it on my charger, I get an internal resistance and it comes out to be like three or four times higher than the battery manufacturer's specification. What do I do? I think my battery is broken. I go back to the manufacturer and claim that the internal resistance measurement was wrong and then it should be replaced. So this causes all kinds of chaos for the battery manufacturer, for everyone who has a charger that comes up with these values. We know that chargers don't produce the same values from charger to charger. We also know there's so many different factors that influence this specific measurement. One of them could be a guy charging at room temperature versus another guy who is charging in their garage when it's only like five degrees Celsius, or I don't know what that would be in Fahrenheit, 45 degrees Fahrenheit maybe. You know that this is going to be some cold weather that's greatly going to increase the internal resistance and that's just going to cause problems for the manufacturer of these battery packs when they're getting everybody reaching out to them because they don't know the standardization process in order to come up with the same values. So this is why internal resistance measurements really can't be used yet because we don't have that part figured out. Then the next question, number six here, very related to the last one, why is there a lack of information for internal resistance and capacity verifications? And the answer here is again, because there's no real standard method and equipment differences, as we talked about in the last question, make comparisons 
unreliable. It's not really possible to do a direct comparison against a manufacturer spec if your own equipment doesn't really match what they're using or it's not being done in the same environment as what the manufacturer has done it in. So really what it comes down to here is that many brands don't want scrutiny and rely on marketing claims instead of lab verifications. Moving on to question number seven here, how do they make higher C rating lithium polymer battery packs? The answer that I got from SMC here was by reducing the coating thickness on the electrode foils, allowing more layers per cell, which this greatly improves the discharge rate. But at the same time, if you get something out of the pack by this manufacturing process, you're probably also losing something in the meantime. And that's exactly what happens. You're gonna get a lower capacity. At the end of the day, this advanced coating process requires some sophisticated machines, which then also drives up the cost of the battery pack. Increasing the C rating of the battery pack also increases its weight because the capacity of the pack is also not going to be as strong as it could be because there is a trade-off there. With a certain amount of weight, you can either add capacity or you can add C rating. Which one do you want and where do you draw that balance? That's how it's done. Let's take a look at question number eight, which is how are lithium polymer brands internal testing done? Now we did touch a little bit about this here on the earlier questions and some battery manufacturers, they do low tests based off of a certain value. They load that value they load that battery pack up a certain amount and they only measure if it maintains a voltage over a certain time period. That might not be the full entire duration of the battery pack. It might be 20 seconds. It might be 30 seconds. It might be a minute. Whatever it is, that could be the process that's done there. Another way to do it here for capacities is that manufacturers, and they often list, them, list this here, that they go through cycles at a 1C charge and a 1C discharge. Now keep in mind that when you're at a 1C discharge, it really doesn't tell you anything about the effective capacity that you're going to get out of a battery pack. And then SMC, it seems like what they do is they do about 50 cycles at 2C to monitor capacity drop and internal resistance changes. This is really looking at the fundamental quality of the battery pack when you already understand and know that the discharge and the capacities are looking good. Now you're trying to monitor the overall health and life of the battery pack and how that's going to perform by doing these specific tests with the cell. Factories rate cells based off of capacity retention after high loads, and this could be an example of 80 to 90% as another way of actually taking that measurement and gaining more information about the cells. I do also want to mention that SMC goes through a bunch of different tests, and we only covered one of them. Another test that they do is they go through the power and performance of that battery by loading it and measuring the voltage drop. Ultimately, understanding how the battery performs is gonna give you with a high quality performing battery and you're gonna know every detail and specification of how that battery behaves under different circumstances. Then you can move on into testing it for cycle duration. Once you have a really good understanding and thorough investigation of how that battery behaves, you can then bring it to market. I'm certain that not all battery manufacturers go through such an in-depth process such as this one. Question number nine here, does a lithium polymer battery pack need a break-in? And the answer that I got from SMC is there has been no information that they've been able to collect that proves or disproves that a break-in is going to either help or not help a battery pack. And we could talk about this, a couple things that we've seen on the channel, but in addition to that, SMC was saying, if you really feel like you want to go through the process of break-in, it's not going to hurt the battery pack. You can go ahead, give it a couple cycles if that feels good good for your process and how you manage your battery packs. And if we take a look here at question number 10, what materials are used for the anode and the cathode? Now we didn't spend a lot of time covering the anode. Typically graphite is used in lithium polymer battery packs for the anode side. And then when it comes to the cathode, we did mention three different you know, different combinations of materials that can be used for the cathode here. SMC uses the top quality anode or cathode material and that cathode material is LCO. This is your lithium cobalt oxide materials. And then we also talked about NMC, which is nickel manganese cobalt. And we also talked about LMO, which is lithium manganese oxide. Those are the three common materials typically used on cathodes, but not all of them. 
And question number 12, what is the optimum or safe temperature range for a lithium polymer battery pack? And the safe operating range for a lithium polymer battery pack is gonna be anywhere from that 10 degrees Celsius mark all the way up to about 60 degrees. And some battery packs can even hit 65 degrees. Good cells should be able to hit 65 degrees Celsius and not swell when they return back to room temperature. That's how you can really tell that you have a good battery pack. But either way, you don't really want battery packs to get above 60 degrees here on the channel we use 58 degrees celsius and even when i hit 58 degrees celsius the battery pack still warms up after that because of the amount of stress we place on them in these load tests and they blow past that 60 degree mark by a few degrees and the next question why do lithium polymer battery manufacturers produce battery packs that have outrageous c ratings can deliver extreme amounts of power but then you might find a dean's connector or an ec5 connector on them and an EC5 connector is going to get extremely hot 90 plus degrees Celsius at just a 100 amp load so if you have a greater than 100 amp load you can imagine what happens to that EC5 it could actually desolder itself and then become a big problem for your radio control vehicle and the answer that I got here from SMC is that it's not really about what performs best here for the specific application it's really what the user wants to use and what's the most common battery connector so that people can take that battery and plug it right into their specific application. If it's an EC5 connector, then all the manufacturers are going to want to have that available so that they can use the battery pack. This is the, the RC hobbyist. Use the battery pack right away and drop it into their application. It's not really about performance more so as it is about convenience. And this is a problem because you are not going to get good performance coming from these battery connectors, nor is it really even a good idea to push a lot of power through them. Many people are not pushing significant amounts of power through them, so that's why this works. Next question here is what makes lithium polymer packs weigh differently between brands and also between different capacities and different C ratings? And really what it comes down to here is very much what we already discussed with the differences in the layering design, the material, material quality, the difference in foil thicknesses and how many layers that we actually have. A battery capacity that is more significant or a C rating that is more significant, it takes weight to be able to produce this type of feature that you get in terms of the power output. So this ultimately is what plays in a factor here. Good quality materials are going to weigh more. That's how you get battery power. The next question I have here is about the charge rates of a battery pack. Is it harmful to charge at rates such as 2, 3, 5 C, or is it only 1 C that is acceptable when you don't want to harm and hurt your battery pack? And the answer that I got here is that theoretically charging your cells harder is going to be harder on the cells. If you're going at a higher rate, it's going to potentially hurt the battery pack. But generally, and I've noticed this thing too, at 2 C, I don't really notice myself or performance difference and SMC does much of their cycle testing at 2C. 2C charge rates, 2C discharge rates. Let's take a look at the next question which talks about why are newer lithium polymer battery packs more energy dense, have more capacity in smaller sizes? The answer that I got here was this is really ultimately due to improved materials and the manufacturing process and precision that you can achieve. Better coating, better layer thicknesses, and fewer defects contribute to this. Not every single pack that is created is a good pack. So there is some that goes to waste in this entire process. That's just the process and that's what you get out of that process. And here's a question that I ended up asking. I want to specifically know, should I be making my test based off of the absolute best possible performance by getting the battery pack and conditioning it to get that best performance? And the answer that I got here was that the battery pack that you receive placed at room temperature is a great way of testing the battery pack. Heat lowers the internal resistance of a battery pack as we know here on the channel and falsely improves the results. And it's also very hard to be consistent with this type of performance aspect of the specific test. If you know that batteries always perform very well at the same temperature, maybe that would help, but different batteries might need different temperatures to perform better. So ultimately bringing in battery packs 
products on the channel, testing them at room temperature is a great way to get good consistent results as we've achieved. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I have going through and understanding more deeper details about our hobby and more specifically lithium polymer battery packs around that whole marketing idea. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.